Praise the Lord. Oh, that you hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say to yourselves, say, my God is a good God. You know, one of the things I always like to tell people at the time when things are rough and tough in their lives is that at the end of the day, nobody else can change your situation. Only God. Somebody say, only God. Now, if it's only God that can change your situation, then you should give him the glory. You should honor him, respect him, and at the same time, honor all the name of the Lord. El Shaddai, El Elyon, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. Are you with me, somebody here? Is your yesterday, is your today, and it's going to be your tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe strongly in my heart that things will change for you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, say, I'm prophesying to you that things will change for you, and only God can make it so. If you believe that, give Jesus a good round of applause if you believe it. Hallelujah. I'm going to be doing something at the end of this service. I'm going to be praying for families. No, because I just feel in my spirit throughout the week. I, I don't know whether, well, I won't say it's the cold. <laughs> but you know, some things, some things just make you think. Amen. Um, I know it's been pretty cold and a lot of you would have been feeling the cold. And you know, when it is cold, you are not at your best. Is that not true? You are so, you know, wrapped up. You are trying to get warm. I, I, I hope you are warm in this service this morning. Oh, good. You are trying to get warm. You are trying to, you know, just to, just to stay warm, that kind of a thing. But, you know, it, it's also important for us to know that the end of the year can be a very trying period. Yes, it can be emotionally, physically, uh, uh, in all sense, it can be. In the sense that a lot of things that you have looked up to God that God will do before the end of the year seems not to have been done. It seems as if, oh God, this is still there, this has not been achieved. But I want you to understand one thing, that God is not a criminal. Okay, you missed that. God is not what? A criminal. So he can't be arrested for not doing what he's supposed to do, Amen. God is an awesome wonder. It's the best thing that can ever happen to you as a person. So it's important for you and I to know there is going to be an expected end. There will be a testimony of an expected end. So don't concentrate on all of those things that are not working. Okay? Concentrate on praising God. Okay. Is it not the man who is alive that can complain? <laughs> Amen. Is it not, keep the children please, is it not the man who is alive that can what? Complain? It's the when we have breath that we can see say, I'm not satisfied. But when they lower a man, I attended a funeral some few days ago, and um, when I got there, and they lowered this young man, young man, you know, we're middle-aged, I can, into the ground, I said to myself, he's gone home. He's gone home. Then I look at everybody around. They were downcasted. They were so sad. And I understand that. Nobody likes to lose anyone. Nobody likes it. But you know one thing? That that moment taught me? Appreciate what you have. Appreciate what you have. How many people here can breathe this morning? Try and breathe. Inhale and then exhale. Okay, how many people here can lift up their right hand this morning? Try, just try it, if it's possible. Oh, it's possible. All right. How many people here can lift up their left hands? Oh, I see. Now, how many people can say with their mouth, God is good? Say, let me hear. Listen to me. If you can do those three things I've asked you to do right now, then any other thing is secondary. Are you hearing me? Any other thing is what? Secondary. 
if you can still get up in the morning, you can still go to the work that you seem not to like so much, but still pay your salary and pay your bills. Amen. You can still enter the train with other people, come out alive without any terrorist attack. You can still open your mouth and call your children by name. Those of you who have children. And for those of you who have children, you can still call mommy and daddy. That is a great privilege. Are you hearing me? And for those of you that have the opportunity to be able to at least work with those who cannot work. You work in NHS. You work in the hospital. You see how they are bedridden. We're not making fun of them. No. But I'm simply saying to you, if you have seen all of that, you have every cause to give God thanks. You have every cause to give God praise. So do me a favor this morning. Lift up your two hands and shout your loudest hallelujah. If you don't mind, give somebody a high five. Say God is good. Hallelujah. So I, 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 I want us to be attentive to the few things I have to say. I have just very few uh, minutes to say these things. And I want you to know at the back of your mind that I believe that God will speak a word to you in season today in Jesus' name. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, quickly. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 6. Proverbs 3, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to 6. I read, My son, forget not my law. But let thy heart keep my commandments. Somebody say, my heart will keep God's commandments. All right. For length of days and long life, listen to this, listen to this. Length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. And so shalt thou find favor. Somebody say, I will find favor. favor. Alright. He says, so shall thou find favor. Look at that. And good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not on thy own understanding. In how many ways, please? In all thy ways. What should we do? Acknowledge Thank you. Acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct thy path. Say with me. Fortifying my faith. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for the entrance of a word that's going to come with power and authority. Thank you for light. Thank you for understanding. At the end of the day, let the glory and the honor be yours in the name of Jesus. And somebody say, be God, amen. amen. All right. Now, quickly. Um... In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible tells us there, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, verse 6 says, Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Now, I believe strongly in my heart that due to diverse or continuous bombardment that our faith in God experiences from time to time, we need to ensure that our faith is heavily fortified. In other words, when you look at the various challenges and the various attack that our faith is presently, our faith in God is presently going through, then one thing that you and I must do so that we don't become victims of this attack is that we need to fortify our faith. I want you to understand this, that faith can come under attack. In Matthew chapter 14, the Bible talks about a young man by the name Peter. I called him a young man by the name Peter. Who had faith in God to be able to walk on the water. And the scripture tells us that when he jumped on the water, he began to walk. And there are some of us that we know that the beginning of everything, we, our faith was working, things were producing, things were working for us. But the scripture says, as he walked a little distance, before he could get to where Jesus was, the scripture says he saw the wind boisterous. His faith came under a serious attack. And that attack was able to deflate the trust and the confidence that this man had in God. It was God that spoke to him. It was Christ that said, come. It was the word of God that he was acting upon. It was what God said. It was the voice of God that he heard. But despite the fact that God spoke, he still sank. It is because that our faith at times comes under attack. And when the Bible says that when he saw the wind boisterous in Matthew 14, if you read 30 to 31, the scripture says he began to sink. There are people who are sinking right now. Not because they want to sink, but because their faith is under a terrible attack. 
You can no longer confess what you used to confess. You do no longer believe what you used to believe. You don't have the same confidence that you used to have. Your faith is under attack. So faith can come under attack. Again, if you read the book of Mark chapter 4, you see another set of people, the disciples of Christ this time around, they were in a ship, and the scripture tells us that they were going to the other side. And the Bible says that as they got to the middle of the sea, that the sea began to rage. And then the wind was contrary to the point that so much water was beating into their ship. And as a result of that, their ship began to sink. The scripture says at that point in time, they did not even remember faith at all. They, at, at, at the end of the day, Peter was able to go and call Jesus, who was sleeping at the inner part of the ship. And Jesus, when he came out, what was the first thing he said to them? He said, Why, where is your faith? In other words, you could have done this without even coming to me. So what happened was that their faith in God, the same God, the same Christ that they saw raise Lazarus from the dead, the same Christ that had just provided 5,000 people, 5,000 men actually, with food without counting the women and the children in addition. The same Christ that have just healed the cripple before then. Now they lost their faith in the face of an attack. Whatever is attacking your faith, hear me today. We are here to subdue it forever in the name of Jesus. Look at the neighbor and say, even though your faith is under attack, you are going to have victory in the name of Jesus. Alright. So we need to fortify our faith. The word fortify, what does it mean? Write it down if you don't mind. If you don't, then just go over, just listen very carefully. If you can't, just listen very carefully. The word fortify or fortified simply means to build defenses around a thing. So when you fortify your faith, you are building defenses around it. Is it possible that what you see will be contrary to what you believe? Yes. Is it possible that what you have confessed will be contrary to what others are saying about you? Yes. But the fact is this. The, 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 the effectiveness or the productivity of your faith is not dependent on what you see and it's not dependent on what others are saying about you. It's dependent on whether or not you still can keep the faith. Paul said in the book of 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, he said, I fought a good fight. When I looked at the fight that he fought, later he explained, he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So the ability to keep the faith, first of all, require us to fortify our faith, to build defenses around our faith. So when you say you believe that the Lord will end this year with a testimony of expected end, then build, a, build defenses around it. Because this will happen in the first week of the month of December that will suggest to you that what you are saying is far-fetched. But you have to keep saying what you are saying. Okay, you missed that. You have to keep declaring what you are declaring. He who has begun a good work, Philippians 1 verse 6, he shall perfect it. You have to keep saying it. You have to build a defense around it. You have to ensure that you keep it from the attack of the enemy on that faith. I believe strongly in my heart that somebody will end this year with a testimony of expected hand. Yeah. So you have to, but before that, fortify your faith. Fortify it. Then again, quickly, the word fortify, what does it mean? It means to secure. Secure your faith. It is not God's responsibility to do that. You are the one that has to do that for yourself. Secure your faith. The word secure is from the word security. In other words, to guarantee the safety of your faith. I believed at the beginning of this year, and at the end of this year, I still believe. I am securing, I am building defenses around my faith. The word fortify, I love this one. It also means to protect. Someone say, I will protect my faith. Oh, I didn't hear you very well. Say, I will protect my faith. Say it online too. It's your responsibility. The word fortified also means to strengthen. Strengthen your faith. I always say this to people as a preacher. I also have to put myself in a position where I can be preached to. So when it seems as if my faith is a little bit wobbling, I sit down under teachings. Apart from reading the word of God, I sit down under teachings inspired by God to quicken, to strengthen, to secure, to build defenses around what I say I believe. Because sometimes you may need to hear from somebody else confirming what God has told you. To secure it. I believe and I pray in the name of Jesus, your faith will not fall victim of any attack of the enemy. If there's anything you need, sorry, if there's any time you need your faith to be strong, it's at the end. 
Because God reserved the best. I've taught you here for the end. He said there is an end. <laughs> and somebody's expectation, listen to me right here, shall not be cut off. By December 31st, I am prophesying over your life, online and here, that you will have a testimony of an expected end. You will be able to dance. You will be able to rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. Give somebody a high five. Say, I will fortify my faith. We need to fortify it. We need to secure it. You need to protect it. We need to strengthen it. The word fortify, I love this one. It means to hold up and brace it. Brace it. Now, if you have some serious problem with uh, the arrangements of your teeth, there's something the dentists do. Dentists do. Uh, they call it putting braces in, our, in, our, in your teeth. That the, proper, the, the reason for the braces is to give support to what is weak. So when our faith is weak, because there will come a time your faith will be weak. It doesn't matter who you are. There was a time that Jesus told Peter. He said, listen, Peter. He said, your faith. He said, the devil has desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have what? Prayed for you. So when you are strengthened, he said, please, and converted, strengthen your brethren. Because when Peter denied Jesus Christ, can you imagine how weak he was? That was a vulnerable moment in the life of Peter. And the devil liked to, oh my God. Satan, listen to me, is an expert in making sure that he's present when you are vulnerable. He always like, he will not come to you when you are strong. Why will he come to you when you are strong? You will rebuke him. If he comes to you when you are strong, you will tell him, get out of my side. You get me behind me. But he comes when he knows that you seem to be questioning. You seem to be looking or having a second on mind about what you say you believe. That is when he will step in. That is when he will come with his lies. He says, hey, you see now? Do you now see that if God truly is God, can it take God 11 months to do this thing? But one thing that he does not realize is this. We know some things that he does not know. And I'm going to share that with you today. Someone say, I'm securing my faith. Securing. Say with joy in your mouth. Say, I'm securing my faith. Say, I'm bracing my faith. Say, I'm holding up my faith. Say, I'm building defenses around my faith. Say, I'm protecting my faith. So it's so important for you and I as believers to learn how to protect, how to secure, how to strengthen, how to hold up, how to brace, how to build defenses around our faith. Because our faith can come under attack. Can I have an amen in the house if you don't mind? Amen. Now, over the years as a child of God and as a minister of the gospel, Having have different interactions with people and also interactions with the word of God and hearing from the spirit of God from time to time when I've had to go through a very difficult time in my life when my faith was at my lowest, at the lowest. Well, the thing that God taught me that I used to be able to come out of those dark days, uh, to be able to come out of those stormy times uh, victorious is what I'm about to teach you today. One thing that God taught me, listen to me, that you can use to fortify your faith is trust in him. Trust. Someone say trust. Now, I know a lot of people have defined faith as trust in God, but let me, let me just try and differentiate between the two of it today. Listen very carefully to me. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, the scripture says, hear this, faith, he said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Someone say hope for. Good. So whenever we are talking about faith, and I believe I've taught you in the series of faith, I've taught you guys on Wednesday, listen, that faith has its connection with hope. Whenever you have hope, you have faith. Because faith is the substance of what you are what? Hoping for. It is the tangibility of what is invisible. The invisible that you are hoping for is made into, is, I mean, is, is formed into visibility by faith. So when people see your faith, then they can see what it is visible that you are hoping for. Did you get that? Now, listen very carefully to me. But trust goes beyond that. Trust is not about hope. Trust, hear me very well, is actually hoping when there is no likelihood of hope any longer. I will break it down for you. I'm going to show you in scripture. Trust is what the scripture said Abraham did. Look, when God speaks to you when you are 70 that you have a child. And you are 90 and there's no clue. And you are 95 and nobody is showing up in your house. You are 99, 98 and your, 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 your wife is still struggling with having a child. She has passed menopause. 
Now, between the age of, okay, maybe at 70 when God spoke, you believe. 71, you still believe. 75, the Lord is good. 78, praise the Lord. At 80, you know what you begin to say? Father, have mercy. Your prayer changes. At 85, people will look and say, what are you still believing? Are you with me, somebody here? But the Bible now tells us, listen to this very carefully, about Abraham. And I want to read it. In Romans 4 verse 18, for you to know that what he actually did, he moved from just having faith to coming to a place where he was now trusting. Where he was now trusting. Faith will be challenged, attacked, made fun of where trust does not exist. If you can't trust, your faith can't last. If you can't trust, Come and see this. Romans 4 verse 18. Listen to this. Who, talking about Abraham. Who against. Someone say against. Yes. Now that is trust. Faith is hope. Substance of things hoped for. Trust is believing against that hope. Oh. Are, are you getting this? The hope is no longer there. Physically. The likelihood of that thing happen is no longer likely. And therefore, but you still have to believe. To do that, you have to believe against what? The hope. And when you begin to believe against the hope, you have, just le you have left the realm of just believing. You have not come to the realm of trusting. This is the realm where you don't have an answer for questions. But you have a conviction to stand. Oh, God, help me. To this is the realm where you can no longer give answers to the questions that life is asking you. If it is God, why not now? If it is God, why have you not gotten that job? If it is God, why have you not had that thing? If it is God, why don't you have that child? But the fact is this. When you are asking, when life is asking you that question, and you can still say, eyes have not seen. Years have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of any man. What God will do to abide your belong, I don't know whether you call your name for your own. What God will do for me. When you still have that, are you with me somebody here? When you still have that, that is trusting. That is what? It is trust that carries faith to delivery point. I trust God. I trust God. Someone say, I trust God. Trust is the anchor. Say with me. Say anchor of our faith. So when your faith is not producing, what do you anchor it on? Trust. It's trust. When my faith is not producing, I anchor it on trust. I put it in the place of trust. I say, you know what? I've gone beyond believing. I am now trusting. So when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, are you with me? I will fear no evil because I trust him. Oh God. You will love this. Look at what I say. You will love what pastor is about to say. <laughs> so faith, hear this, is what we engage with to prevent something negative from happening to us. But trust is what you engage with if despite your faith it still happens. So if something negative, Father, it will not happen to me. This particular thing will not come upon me. Then he came. Do you stop believing? It is, look, <laughs> the devil will tell you, if you have faith, faith should have stopped it from happening. But God is trying to tell you, when it happens, what do you move to? The realm of? Oh, give yourself a big hand. You got it. You move to the realm of what? Trust. The realm where you don't have an answer, but you are convinced about something I'm about to share with you. So, because people always say, if it is God, it should not happen. Well, honey, it happened. Yes, Amen. Like I said, people say, wake up and smell the real coffee with caffeine in it. It happened. You lost that job. Yes. You lost that opportunity. Yes. But what is it that will make you say, even if he... Okay, you, 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 you're going to get it. Say to neighbor, say neighbor. I'm moving to the realm of trust. Say, I'm taking, I'm fortifying my faith with my trust in God. So the Bible says in Psalm 56 verse 3, he said, what time I am afraid? Listen to me. When I'm afraid, what do I do? What time I'm what? Afraid. What, what did he say? He said, I will. Now, I want to look at the word will there. That's where I'm going. Not I may. 
Not I feel, but I will. So this is intentional. I am trusting him because it's it. Trust is intentional. One woman was told some years ago that the baby in her womb was dead. And she told them, she said, I believe God. They said, we have to take the baby out. Uh, the baby is 36 or 37 uh, weeks, so we have to take the baby. He said, And she said, I believe God. The husband stood with her and said, you know what? We have nothing to lose. They say he's dead. So let's just do what? Believe. We trust God for a miracle. By the time they were taking the baby out, the heart started beating again. That is trust. Trust is this. I don't have an answer for you. But I'm standing here. Oh, Karabo Shakali and Gabaha. Trust is this. I, I, I couldn't stop that thing from happening, but I am standing here. That was what Job had. We're going to see very soon. That was what he had. How will you ever explain a righteous man losing all his children in one day? Is that enough to cost God? What kind of faith are you having? You lost your entire business in one day, the same day. If the devil does not make fun of you, your generation will make fun of you. It was so bad that the wife told him, curse God and die. Why do you still retain your integrity? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is not a criminal. I cannot curse him. I will stand in integrity. I will trust him. If you believe that, say a big hallelujah if you believe it. So he said, yeah, what time I'm afraid? The time I'm afraid. I will trust what? In the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 5. He said, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. So trust produces results. He shall bring it what? To pass. Someone said to pass. There will come that time. I'm telling you when you walk down that aisle with your husband to be. There will come that time when you carry your own children in your own hand. There will come that time that you're going to have your own company in this same country. And you'll be employing people. And when they come to you and they are discouraged, you will tell them, I started like you. It was tough. It was rough. When I came into this place, uh, it took me almost 10 years, 15 years. Uh, but you know what? At the end of the day, I am laughing. Uh, I want to say to someone here prophetically, like it was said about Sarah. Sarah said, those who have seen my misery, those who have seen my agony, those who have seen my shame, those who have seen my re approach. Uh, they are going to see my testimony. They are going to hear my testimony. And they are going to laugh with me. They are going to rejoice with me. They are going to shout with me. They are going to dance with me. I say, and Isaac is coming to your life. Uh, laughter is coming in your direction. Uh, laughter is coming in your direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Uh, give somebody a high five. Say, I receive, I receive laughter. But it's true trust. It's true trust. You have to trust him. Isaiah 26 verse 3. He said, thou we keep him, I like that, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, on thee, because he trusted in thee. Now, let me say something here, because I've got to tie this together for you to understand what trust is. Listen to this particular statement I'm about to make. Trust, hear this very well, when you trust God, you are trusting his person. Not his power. Okay, I, I, let, me, let me say that. Can I say that again? That you can get it. When we trust God, we trust what? His person. Not his performance. There are certain people, Christianity is all about what God should do. What God will do. And God can do anything. There's nothing impossible to him. But when he chooses, do you know that God also has a choice not to do it? Or you think everything he has to do? My father and the Lord preached a message many years ago. He said one of the answers to, every, to some prayers from God is no. If God gave you everything that you asked for, I'm telling you by now, you have been dead. If he gave you that man to marry you, you have been dead by now. If he gave you that woman to marry you, you have run mad by now. If he gave you that job, by now they will have ruined your career. If he gave you, look, there are certain things. Father, he said no. No is a good answer from God. All answers to prayers are not yes. Not, God's not a yes man. Father, do it. I will not do it. God taught me a lesson. I think it was in 1999. 1999. So I had to teach it. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Listen to this very carefully. He prayed a prayer. Lord, 
If thou will, thou canst. And the Holy Spirit says, son, read it again. So I read it again. He said, listen to me. My ability only answer to my will. If thou will, then thou what? Can. Can is ability. Are you hearing me? Will is pleasure. So if God will do it, it's because he Oh, thank you, Lord. Because he what? Wills. So if it is not part of his plan, <laughs> I know, Naomi, you are messed up. And you are going back to Bethlehem of Judea. And at the end of the day, not everybody wants to go with you. Only Ruth, Upper went back. There are people who always cry about those who went back. Let me say this to you. It is not everybody that can be with you for God to do what he wants to do. Bishop T.D. just said something. He said, don't cry about the man who left you and left you high and dry. Are you hearing me? <sighs> I was watching a program some years ago. Uh, it's called X Factor. When it was very sane and very normal. <laughs> I'm talking about a long time ago. I'm trying to remember the year. Long guess time ago. 2008, I think. And there was this young lady that won the X Factor that year. But it was a story that got to me. Before she came into the competition, her fiancé, quote and unquote, planning to get married, everything, told her she was not good enough. Not beautiful enough. And then left her. Just left her, walked away from her. Put her in a place of shame and reproach. Then she came into S-Factor and now she has won it. He's texting her. Telling her how great she looks. How good she looks. There are certain people that cannot go back with you, Naomi. Listen, it's not everyone that can walk with somebody who is shamed. Naomi was shamed. She lost her husband. She lost her two sons. And do you know, in all of that, God was still working. Read your Bible. In all of that, God was choosing Ruth. So you mean I've lost my two sons? I've lost my husband just for me to have what? But you are not just getting Ruth. You know who you are getting? Do you know who you are getting? Do you know what, who, she get, what she, who she got? Who did she get? Jesus. She got who? Jesus. Look, God is doing something that will be greater than what any other man can do for you. Are you with me, somebody here? So understand this. When you trust God, you trust his person. You trust him. him. Somebody shout him. Say it like, like you mean it. Say him. You trust him. You don't trust her. He, his power has not done it. No. I trust you. You. Someone say you. you. Look at this. He said here. It is trust in his person. Who he is, not what he can do. So my trust is not in what he is doing. There are times God does not act. So what do you do then? There are times that you believe God for that job, but he didn't give you. So what do you do then? Because here in Proverbs 3 verse 5, he said, trust in the Lord, not in his power. Trust in the Lord. His power will come, but first trust in him. Somebody say, I'm walking with him. Oh, I didn't hear say, I'm walking with him. Whether he gives me or does not give me, I'm walking with him. He said in the book of Isaiah, listen, we read it earlier on, 26 verse 3, listen to this scripture again. He said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. He stayed on thee, because he trusted what again? In thee. Come on, someone say thee. So it is all about thee. It's all about him. I'm working with God. You are trusting in God. You believe God. God, you, your mind is stayed on God. It's all about him. His person, his character. Are you hearing me, somebody? Who he is, not what he can do. That's where the trust is. 
who he is. And do you know one thing? He is everything. Oh, you know, it's better to trust in him than trust in his power. He is what? Everything. If you have God's power and God himself withdrew, withdraws himself from you, if there is no power without presence, his presence has to be there for his power to be made available. So when you see contrary evidence to what you believe and your faith is under attack, fortify it. What do you fortify it with? Trust. Somebody shout T. I think I said T for Tango, R for Romeo, U for Uniform, I mean Uniform, S for Sierra, T for Greater Tango. <laughs> Shout, what does that mean? Trust. Give somebody a high five. Say, I trust God. Make sure you give somebody a high five. Say, I trust God. Hallelujah. I trust Him. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. He said, Blessed is the man. You see, for just trusting Him, you are blessed. You don't have to have a car to be blessed. You don't have to have the breakthrough to be blessed. Who is a blessed man? Blessed is the man that what? Trusted in what, please? In the Lord. And whose hope is where? The Lord is. Who hope the Lord is? Children of God. I have been in situations in my life. Because people sometimes think that pastors don't have problems. Our problems are more. We just don't talk about them. Don't want to discourage you. Because if you talk about our problem, you'll be discouraged. You know why? Because you say, if that can happen to a pastor, there's no hope for me. No, there's hope for you. Amen? We have a lot of issues. We have things to deal with. There was a time in my life I had to deal with situations that I cannot put my finger on. Many years ago, where you labor and there's no return. Where there's no food to even, not even slice of bread. How do you explain that? The devil came and told me, you will see mama. You will see fire. You will be put to shame in this land. And there was nothing. One of those days, I, I remember it was a time when I had to renew my visa many years ago. Many years ago. And then they, 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 somebody lied against me. And then they said I, they, were, they were going to deport me. I just came into this country. I've never, be, I've never been to court to anywhere in the world. Now they're asking me. And I said to myself, Faith should stop this from happening. But the devil said, well, your faith didn't work. Okay, trust will work. So trust is this. I'm going to hang in here. But you're suffering. Oh, let me suffer. You don't get it. The devil. Satan, you don't get it. I am in this for the long haul. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon. This is what the Bible says. When you, look, when you trust God, at times you have to run through a troop. Thank God for Goliath or else we'll never know a David. The battles you are fighting now will reveal you to your generation. It was tough. It was rough. But the testimony that came out of that, the testimony, in fact, I, I, I still remember, I remember a lovely couple. They're still members of this church. You know, they, 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 they were so concerned about me. So they went to find out from the home office, somebody they knew there, and said, what, please, what can we do to help our pastor? And the pastor said, ah, said, I read this case. Tell him he should start packing his luggages now because he's going home. At that point, when an officer from the home office tells you that, what do you do? So, it's not what he said against what God said. So, which one am I going to stand with? Thank God I stood with God. I prayed, my wife and I prayed our way through to the point where it was on the day they were going to give me my stay in this country that, I, that my wife saw it. He said, I saw it today. They're bringing it today. I saw it today. They're bringing it today. 6 or 5 p.m. They knocked on the door and brought it. On the same day. But it was trust. It took some months. It wasn't like the next week that it happened. Amen. It took what? Some months. But we hung in there. That's how I knew how to frost the devil. Many years ago, my father in the Lord said something. He said, when you are trusting God, and you are climbing down, climbing down a rope, and you get to the end of the rope, and there's no more rope to climb down, he said, tie a knot and hang in there. I read a story to you to have somebody some, some time ago. How he went up a mountain and he had to climb down with this rope. And he was climbing down. But it was in the night so he couldn't see the ground. He was cold, freezing cold, sub-zero temperature. And then he got to the end. And he said, but God, I prayed to you to save me. 
Now I've got to the end of the rope and I can't see the ground. And God said, jump. Jump. Do you know how far the ground may be from here? God said, I said, jump. He did not jump. Just for him to die there and for the people who knew the story to get there in the next morning and saw that it was just some few yards, some few feet away from the ground. The God who is saying jump knows better. The God who said I will bless you with an expected thing, he knows better. So, look, listen to me. The economy and the chancellor does not know more than God. I know they have said their own. If I decide they will help you, they will cut NI. Amen. Hallelujah. They will cut taxes for you. Amen. But your blessing will still come from the Lord. Are you with me, somebody here? What I'm trying to say is this. Let us trust him. Who are we trusting, please? Him. So when we trust him, we are not waiting for anything. We are just looking at him. Hebrews 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and what? The finisher of what? Our faith. Talking about Sarah, as I begin to tie it all up, time will not permit me to finish this message today, but I will leave with this introduction today. Because I want people to learn how to fortify their faith at this end time. Fortify it. They will ask people to leave jobs. Yes. Fortify your faith. The opportunities may not be as plenty as it used to be. Fortify your faith. The darkest hour in the night is only a little while before the day breaks. 12 midnight is just what? One second away from what? One minute away from what? 12.01. And that is a.m. Look at what Sarah did. Because I used to wonder, how did Sarah survive? How did she survive so many years of people making fun of her? How did she survive her friends that they all got married together? You know, people get married together at the same age. So, oh, when you have your own child, then I'll have my own child. Then you have the second one. Then I'll have the second one. Then you have the third one. Then I'll have the third one. And then we will come together. Our children will be playing together in the playground and all of that. She had that dream. She had that faith in God. She even married Abraham. Can you imagine? Father of many nations. And yet no single child. Everything God told you before you came to this country, it will happen. Every promise God has given to you in this nation, it will happen. It is not, it's not dependent on economy or anything. It will happen. You will not see wind. You will not see rain. But what God has said, he will watch over it to fulfill it. But fortify your faith with what? Trust. 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 Look at this. Hebrews 11 verse 11. I want to read it from the Amplified Translation. The King James was a little bit just short. But the Amplified Translation amplified it. Talking about Sarah, listen to this. The King James, that's what the King James they put there for you. He said, through faith also Sarah received strength to conceive and she was delivered of a, made of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Listen to the Amplified. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive a child. Even when she was long past the normal age for it. What happened after she was long past? Trust came in. Because, how do I know trust came in? Because she considered him. <laughs> I know you have a word from God. But the word does not look as if it's not even going to happen at all. When he looks at her, who do you consider? Him. Oh, you didn't get that. You got a letter from the king of England saying, come for dinner. Now you go to the gate. A security man said, you can't enter. Who do you consider? Him. You bring out the letter and you show him. He said, she considered him. Not even what was said. Consider what? He Ask him, but who are you considering? He said, she considered him. Who had given her the promise. She was not considering the promise. She was considering him who gave the promise. God is not a criminal. If he, Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is just a man that he should repent. If he has said it, he will do it. If he has spoken it, he will bring it to pass. Don't, matter, don't mind what you are going through right now. You need all of that in your life right now to shape you up, to build you up, to mold you up, to put into your life what is lacking, to let you appreciate what you need to appreciate, for let you to put significance or what you need to put significance and importance on. But when God is done with that, like he did it for Joseph, he will cause Pharaoh to have a dream. A need will arise in the palace for you. And they will call you to come. You will not 
need to follow protocol. You will not need any pro oh mashadala brother kabaya. You will not need anybody to open any door for you. You will be they'll be waiting for you. The king will be waiting for you. The emperor will be waiting for you. The emperor will be waiting for you. The politicians will be waiting for you. When you enter that place, uh, you don't need to struggle to get a place. Uh. A place has been reserved for you already. And in that place, you will reign uh, over the land that reigned over you. You will be victorious uh, over what has been victorious over you. I know you are just an employee right now, but on that day, it will all change. Uh, it will all turn around. It will all be transformed. Uh, and you will become an employer of labor. God can do it. God will do it. But trust in Give the Lord a big hand. Come on, if you don't mind. You trust in him. You trust in him. Someone say, I trust in him. Say, they say, I consider him. It's him I'm considering. It's not what is happening. Who am I considering? Him, Jesus, God Almighty himself. When Jesus went to the cross, the pain was too much, but he considered him that said, I will not leave your soul in hell. I will not allow your body to suffer corruption. On the third day, wherever it is, man will not be present, but the stone shall be rolled away. On the third day, there will not be military men there to help you, no macho man to open the grave, but I will roll the stone away. Out of that grave, you will come out, not the way you went in, but you will come out as a savior. You will come out over Ari Katayaba, over every person principalities and powers and you will say all power is given unto me in heaven and in the house Jesus judge God faithful that he will raise him up so he put down his I considered him someone say I considered him if you don't mind say a bit louder say I consider him who had given me the promise what did he, that's how I knew she walked in trust. What did she consider him as? Look at this. He said, him. He said, I, he said, she considered him who had given her the promise to be reliable and true. Reliability and truthfulness is trust. God is reliable. He's not a criminal. God is who? Reliable. We can lay on him. We can lean on him. That's why trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. My account does not have to speak well. But I'm considering him. It's him. Someone say it's him. This is where trust is birth. In the heart of the man that has faith. And the faith is under attack. All Peter had to do in Matthew 14. When he shut the window saying, you know what? Keep blowing. But I'm considering him. Who said I should come? Hallelujah. I'm considering him. Who said I should come? It was God that helped you to buy the house you buy. He will pay the mortgage off for you. It's God that brought you to this land. That he will take care of you. Do you know before you came here, every breakfast you will eat, they've been prepared, been prepared. Every dinner you have, it has been prepared. Every office you will work, it has been prepared. Whatever is due for the end of this year that you have not received already, I stand as a servant of the Most High God, as one who judge God faithful, as one who judge God reliable, as one who judge God truthful. I prophesy over your life, you shall have have what is due to you. You shall have what is due to you. You shall have what is due to you. You shall have what is due to you. In the name of Jesus. Give somebody a high five. Say, I will have it. Because I consider him. So tell that devil when he's asking, asking you questions, I consider him. I judge him. The King James said, I judge him faithful. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He says, Faithful is he that calleth you. First Thessalonians 5, 24. Who will also what? Do it. But first of all, faithful is he. That's why I love the song the choir gave. Sang the praise and worship today. It's all about him. It's about him. We are standing with him. We are holding on to him. Hebrews 10, 23. He said, Hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. Why? For he is faithful that promised. I know people in this country today. I remember a young man who told me, he said, when he came to this country, too, we were so bad, he was living in a bus. He would go with the bus from morning to night, just from place to place. Today, when he was telling me his story, he said, God has blessed me so much, I have many properties today. Who could have ever told that the man who does not have a place to lay his head? We have properties. He said, but sir, do you know one thing I was doing then? I was just considering him. You have to consider him. 400-
130 years, no victory. But he showed up when it matters the most. Consider him. Judge him faithful. If there's anything that man is, man is unfaithful. Man, your feeling is unfaithful. Your feeling. Somebody said recently, he said, don't you dare trust your feelings. Your feelings that can tell you to go and jump off the water, jump off the bridge. Want to trust that feeling? Don't you dare trust that feeling. Your feeling is fickle. Have you ever noticed that in the morning you can be sad and by the, middle, by, by the end of the day you are happy? That's your feeling. But that's not God. God, Hebrews 13 verse 8, he said the same yesterday. There's, there's something about God is called consistency. There's the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore. He does not change. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I consider him. Is him I'm considering. Who are you considering, please? If you consider the chancellor's autumn statement, you will not have faith. If you consider the politician's statement, you will not have faith. If you consider even what they are saying at work, you will not have faith. You can sit down like this at work, and all your colleagues will be telling you all the woes. Ah, evil is about to happen to us in UK. Economy is about to be inflation. Inflation. If don't cons consider him. Because he is greater than all these people who combined together. He was the one who stepped out of darkness and spoke to darkness. And said, let there be light. God will speak over your life this month. I speak victory over your life this month. I speak joy over your life this month. I speak grace over your life this month. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You are not going down. You will not end this year with weeping. You are going to end it with joy. You are going to end it with rejoicing. You are going to end it with gladness. You are going to end it with success. You are going to end it with victory. If you believe that, shout a big hallelujah. I consider him. I judge him faithful. Someone say, I judge him faithful. Oh, I'm so sorry. Time will not permit me to tell you how to build trust. If you won't miss next Sunday, you will hear to build trust if the Lord permits me. Because I want to teach you this. I want to run this series on trust. Because what is missing in our faith work is our trust work. It's our trust work. Because the moment faith does not produce, we just give up. And it has passed the time. Who told you? Our times are in his hand. And he makes all things beautiful in his time. Your seasons are in his hand. It is you that think it was this month, last month that you needed it. No, it is reserved for the end of the year. So that your joy will be complete. So that you will know the God of the end. Oh, Sanda Lavayada. So that you will know the God that can speak in January and do it in December. He said, I will crown the year with my goodness. That's what he said. I will crown the year with my goodness. God will crown your year with his goodness. The psalmist said, it was at the end that the psalmist said, surely, have we read it, Psalm 23 before? It was at the end. Surely, goodness and mercy shall do what, please? Follow. If you are the one that you follow, shout amen. amen. My joy is not in what he is doing. My joy is not in what he is not doing. My faith is not in what has not happened. My faith is in what? In him. I judge him faithful. I judge him faithful. He's a reliable God. I judge him faithful. I judge him faithful. I judge him faithful. He's a reliable God. I judge him faithful. So when the devil comes to traumatize your faith, tell him, I trust him. But don't you see what they did? They demoted you. I trust him. Oh, don't miss next week. I want to teach you how to build trust. You there are some things you need to know that will help you to build trust. But first, know that that's what you need to fortify your faith. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. If you love what Jesus has spoken to you today, lift stand up on your feet and just thank him. And thank him. Thank you. Faithful God. Faithful God. You lift me up. You uphold my cause. You wipe my tears. You gave me joy. You gave me joy. You're always there. You're always there. You're 
of your heart. I heard I know you love me but you are now struggling with your faith regarding that thing because every effort you have made have not yielded any result at all and the ones that yielded result didn't yield the kind that you wanted but the thing is this, God said let this word strengthen you today. He said this word came because of you because trust is what you need when faith is under attack Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Lift up your two hands where you are. Just thank Jesus. Say, Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for saying, Lord, thank you for speaking to me. Say, I understand what you are saying now. I'm going to judge you. It's you I'm going to be looking at now. It's you. It's you. And only you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We give thanks. Every head by every eyes closed. Whether you are online or you are here, if you have not given your life to Christ or you are not filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, I want to pray for you today. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands, either in house or online. And if you, are, if you are doing that, repeat these words after me. Say, Dear Lord God, I come to you today as a sinner. To receive the forgiveness of my sins. The ones I know and the ones I can't remember. Say, I believe with all my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. 
If you have prayed that prayer online, listen to me very carefully. Find a full Bible-believing church where you can go to and hear God's word and grow. And I know that God will bless you. If you're around this area embarking near us, please join us every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. and your life will never remain the same. 57 River Road, Barking, IG 11 0 Delta Alpha. We look forward to receiving you in our midst. Be blessed in Jesus' name. And let the people of God here shout a big Amen! Give somebody a high five and say, I trust him.